everybody. We want to welcome you guys to week two of Cast on YouTube. I want to do plays. Yeah, Millie and I just sitting here about to get my pretties done. Uh, this week we've got Brian Abbey. He was our uh, Summer Breeze speaker from this last year's and summer camp. A good friend and uh, in ministry. And daddy and Maddie. And a friend of Millie's and my wife Sarah. And so we're thrilled to have this conversation and music tonight and from a good friend. And dad. Another good friend, Bella uh, Emery, down in Bend, Oregon. So, hope you guys enjoy this, uh, this week of Capstone on YouTube. the camera. You gotta look at the nails when you do it. <laughs> uh, I take a nap and I close your eyes. Close your eyes. <laughs> Taking naps I can. According to the computer, I always recorded the cloud. Cloud? I don't know. I mean, maybe I should since this computer is like, nope. <laughs> That's a great conversation. <laughs> um, you want to introduce yourself, uh, who you are, your family, some hobbies, anything that you think would yeah. uh, be interesting. There you go. Cool. Oh, I don't know if it's interesting or not, but so I'm, uh, I'm Brian Abbey and I uh, live here in the Pacific Northwest, just south of Seattle, down in the Kent Renton area. Uh, did not grow up in the church. I uh, came to know Jesus at age 17 through Young Life. Got invited to uh, go up to Malibu, Canada. And uh, there I got to hear the gospel for the first time. Placed my trust in Jesus and uh, came back. Got involved with youth group. Ended up uh, going up to college and studying the word and decided to become a youth pastor. Did that for 18 years. Uh, been in youth ministry for about 25 now. And uh, for the last 10-ish, uh, had my own organization that led to other opportunities, been speaking nationally and writing and blogging and consulting. And now I, I help with um, with placements of pastors, youth pastors and children's ministry pastors around the country. Um, and so I'm kind of e-harmony for the church and a pastor uh, and and love just networking and being a part of, uh, of the greater kingdom. Um, down here in Kent, I'm an elder at my church, speak a couple times a year to the big church and um, am a, a volunteer youth leader with got the senior dudes. And so who knows if they get to graduate, you know, because of COVID-19. Um, but uh, I've been with them since seventh grade going all the way through. And so they're a, they're a blast to hang out with. Married, three kids, got an 18-year-old daughter, uh, 15, almost 16-year-old daughter, and 11-year-old son who turns 12 this month, next month too. There you go. There's me in a nutshell. Dude, so you're the big city guy. What's it like in the big city, like I like to say, uh, during this corona season? Well, before we hit record, I told you, like, this is the first time that I, yesterday was my first time out in two weeks, besides a, a couple, a couple quick trips, Chick-fil-A, you know, that type of thing. But I did the Costco thing yesterday and man, like the world's changed. There's plexiglass everywhere. Like, you know, so you can't, can't talk to, talk to people, the social distancing, literally like lines, uh, you know, of tape on the floor of how close you can be to the next station and, and all that type of stuff. So, I mean, it's, it's different. Um, you know, the, the first week, I mean, you guys experienced this too. The first week um, of really everything quarantined was so gorgeous that one, that was a temptation for people to go out. And even if they're trying to keep social distance, you go to Alki Beach, you know, and it's like crowded. I didn't do that. But um, the second week, I think with the weather changing back to normal Seattle weather, um, you know, more people have been staying inside. I think that that's actually been a blessing um for the seattle area to to really understand like hey being being at a social distance and being inside is actually what's going to actually help and help flatten this curve 
um, you know, but who knows? I mean, we might find out in two weeks, like that none of this was working and everybody who was supposed to get it was supposed to get it, and, you know, because everything's been changing like bam, 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 bam. But uh, yeah. life is probably pretty much the same, you know, Camino Island as it is here. So like just all slower pace and um, we're all competing for bandwidth on, on the internet now. That's all. Were you getting on board with XFL at all? I was a little bit like my son uh, decided, Will, uh, who a number of you guys met this last summer, you know, when we were uh, doing camp together, um, Will, Will just decided that he was going to adopt it. And so he became a Dragons fan. And how come all of our sport teams want to be Dragons in the Northwest? Is there like, we had an arena team, the Dragons, like what thing of the Northwest really speaks Dragons? I, I kind of wondered that same thing. And I think that there's like some myth. Um, of a Northwest dragon, you know, so I don't quote me. I haven't been on Wikipedia, um, you know, or Bing because we have to support Microsoft. So Bing and not Google. Um, yeah. So um, does Bing even exist anymore? Let's be honest. I don't think so. I just think there's a huge market to be with the Bigfoot. You know, we already have all these people who create it. Why don't we just make the mascot and, and give it its due diligence? Yeah, um, exactly. The next next sports team just call us the Bigfoots. I think that we're supposed to be the NHL Kraken, though. Like that's, that's another gonna be, one. Where's, that's going to be weird. I that's asked Millie two and a half, "What's a Kraken?" And she just grabbed a pack of crackers. Like so. <laughs> no, that, no. <laughs> Me and Brian, we met um, a, briefly at a table at a Dare to Share event. Lead the cause. Uh, back in 2017 and then I reached out to you when I was moving here uh, mm -hmm. and I was like hey could you help me find a job and specifically in Stanwood Camano and you're like this guy's crazy <laughs> um, and guess what I'm working on Camano Island so there you go God's good your your heart is for discipleship because again we met at a conference that's being held in Denver Colorado mm -hmm. um, I was living there and and they make the announcement, hey, we got these groups coming and we have a group from Seattle, Washington. And I was like, what? At my little booth. And yeah. The largest, the largest group that was even there. So at that conference, though, Greg shared upon it and he had all these teens pull out Sharpies and write on their forearms, hashtag normalize risk. And, yeah. and you're, the, you're the author creator there uh, of this story. And maybe even we'll attach a blog post of more of this, but share with us because this really in this season is really becoming true for the church so yeah yeah so that really the origin just so again kind of context matters like greg and i have known each other for a lot of years when when i first moved back to seattle i was in phoenix for a couple of years when i first moved back i got an invite to a, a leader's lunch and show up and there's this dude greeting in the parking lot at overlake church and i thought it was like some high school intern or something like that and it turns out it was Greg Steer, you know, the, the, the dare to share guy um, who's doing this. He's just greeting people out in the parking lot, but he introduces the dare to share weekend experience that they had back then. Um, and then I took my kids to the, the first one that came to Seattle and I was just so impressed. And I wrote an email to them afterwards saying, you guys are awesome, You're doing a great job. Um, and that kind of started like some dialogue each year that Greg came back to the preview lunch. And then when he was here. Um, and I just shot some ideas to him and stuff like that and ended up becoming friends uh, through through all of that. Now we have a like almost daily communication because we're both doing calorie counts. So like we send each yeah. other a screenshot of how many how many calories we eat. But um, anyway, when we're there on site, Greg is like literally wanting feedback from me because he knows I'm a consultant and stuff. So Monday night, he comes up to me afterwards. He goes, hey, what's the what's the feedback? You know, how are you thinking? And I go, here's what I love, Greg. I was like, this, this opening program everything that you guys did um to get us out of our comfort zone just like that i said it was like you guys just normalized risk and he's like oh yeah that's a good word and stuff like that and so then i just went with it and like the next day like i, I wrote on my forearm normalized risk um and then it became kind of like this like kind of viral mo movement within the 400 plus that were there like everybody was like hey this is what this is normalized risk and it's so funny, the day that you and I are shooting this right now, Greg went, he's doing a daily devotional, and, and today was about normalized risk. And um, so during the week, we, I just had the idea. I was like, man, everybody's writing this on here. 
um, we were flying back to Seattle. And so I called my t-shirt dude and I was like, Hey, 24 hours notice, we get off the flight tomorrow night, you know, any chance that we'd be able to have these, he turned them around that quick. So boom, look at that. Oh, now I just lost my other ear AirPod, but that was totally worth it for the, for the, uh, for the effect right there, but there you go. I don't know if it's backwards to the audience or not, but normalized risk right there. Let me get my uh, other AirPod. It kind of became our theme um, for for the fall that year um, that we wanted to see our students normalize and risk and everything that they do in terms of bringing up the gospel. Um, Chimbo, my 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 thought is this: if I and I I my my side hut not side hustle, but coming out of youth pastor, I started this organization that branded Mission 51. It was training for the 51 weeks of life outside of the mission trip. When we're on mission for a one week mission trip, it's like, it's easy to serve. It's easy to share because we're not in the context of our own backyard. The hardest place to serve and to share is usually our own backyard because we're afraid of rejection. We're afraid we don't have the right words to say. We're afraid, well, we've just never had it modeled to us. And so I talk about the Seahawks pretty e easily when I'm in line at Starbucks and somebody says, what'd you do this weekend? Watch the game. Mm -hmm. um, why do I not share, heard a great sermon? Was challenged by my pastor. You know, because like these things were meaningful to me, but I know that I'm risking if I just start sharing about everything that I'm a passion I'm passionate about. But why not normalize that? Why not normalize the stuff that I'm passionate about, whether it be the lasagna, the Seahawks, or my Jesus? Mm -hmm. Like I can talk freely and openly about any of these things, and and I'm weird. I'm weird because of any of them. You know, so why not just be weird completely? So there you go. That's a great question. Um, I probably, I'm, I'm torn between a, a Douglas fir, a Grand fir. Uh, I mean, because I love all my evergreens, the cedar, uh -huh. and and hemlock. Man, like they're all awesome. But I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the Grand fir. One, just because it's, it's like it's grand, you grand. know. Um, but but I love like a Douglas fir is just like steady and and pretty prevalent. Um, a grand fur is is uh, has a little bit more of the shelf a a aspect to it. Like the, the the branches are a little bit more shelved, and I and I think that that's kind of a cool. You can see through it a little bit more, whereas a dug can get really bushy and stuff like that. And I don't know why, but maybe that's how I see myself. Is that I want to be a little bit more transparent, um, have a little bit more definition. Maybe not physically because you know I'm mid forties, but um, so yeah, I don't know. I've never been asked that question, and so I think I thought on my feet pretty well. Dude, that is probably one of the most in-depth responses. I do Just, have another answer, though, too, for somebody. If they do cedar, I could pick cedar because I love beef jerky, and the, 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 the bark of a cedar, you, it comes off on, in strips like beef jerky. So I'm not going to change my answer, though. I'm going to stick with grand fur. I've gone with uh, the bamboo tree. That's not really found in western washington it's not but it's but my question was just a tree in general and so oh. it doesn't need I just to be heard northwest ever, i i heard evergreen and so that's why i chose an evergreen so as you, as you should you're rooted here um yeah. and i the bamboo is with more of it's in snowboards it's in it's strong and it's related to pandas and pandas are it's it's also kind of hollow, so like maybe that. Just saying, just it's saying. So man. True. <laughs> I love our friendship. We wanted to have you up here and speak at a capstone. So we'll we'll we still will. Uh, we'll get into this thing. Um, how can we be praying? You know, even you know this is going to be on YouTube, but um, we're watching it on Tuesday. Uh, mm -hmm. People just catching in. How can we be praying? I appreciate it. Well, um, Pray for my family. I think that every one of us is taking this whole COVID-19 thing in different different places. My wife, who's always struggled with some anxious thoughts, um, it's different for her than it is for me. I can easily be sucked into it if I desire. I'm, I'm a commission-based employee in terms of churches hiring us to do searches and coaching. And so who knows how it's going to affect the economy and the church economy. And um, so there's, there's that. But I'm an entrepreneur, so I'm like, I'm forging ahead man let's just keep going um so yeah pray pray just for for god's provision and for us to lean into that 
Um, and, and literally, I mean, I know it's kind of jokey and stuff like that, but the whole idea of the, the normalized risk is that this is who we are and this is what we want to be is that uh, I want to continually have that, that outward focus of um, edifying, building up the church so the Christians I interact with, may I be an encouragement to them, and the unchurched, may I be a witness um, to them. And, and I think that this is a great opportunity for us to be able to normalize risk with both. So good. Well, um, I'll just pray for us here, and, and uh, we'll, we'll sign off here. So, God, we just come before you. Uh, we thank you for Brian and uh, his heart for ministry. We thank you for allowing him to use his talents and uh, just being uh, transparent and just be with his family in this time during this pandemic. Uh, just may this be fruitful as we just don't look at the news, but we uh, see the good times that we can have and spend with each other. Uh, be with his senior group of guys. Uh, continue to just build those uh, relationships. And as they're going through a difficult season, may Brian just be able to uh, bring uh, comfort and wisdom to these uh, guys. And we also just pray as a church that we would normalize risk, that we would just mm -hmm. seek as, as we are in a time unlike any other um, where neighbors are being maybe more open to conversation as we don't get to see the, the typical crowd, that our conversations just would bear fruit, that it would share of your, your great love, of your message, and that um, through this time, the church would continue to grow. And uh, we thank you for this. We thank you for this time we've had together, and we pray this in your name, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, so. We want to thank Brian and Abby for coming on Capstone on YouTube. Thanks for bringing the message of hashtag normalize risk. Or as this episode really centers around the concept of risk as I get my nails done from Millie and go grocery shopping this whole week with painted nails. You know, the risk factor there uh, definitely has been seen. But for us as Christians, as we hear the gospel, as we read about in our Bibles and our studies, how much of that conversation are we taking out to those around us? Sometimes, often for me, it's muted or we kind of put it in a file uh, to, to be stored later and not presented to the person when they ask what's going on. What's going on is that I'm, I'm becoming a new, a new person, you know? I'm becoming refined. That this new understanding of who God is and his love and his mercy, his protection, even in a time where there's death around us, I've just seen God supply for for us as a family for us as a church and so may i just pray for for you guys that you would normalize this that you would take the challenge as jesus's disciples for he just went to them and said follow me in luke 9 23 his his message is is unpacked further that he said that if anyone would come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me it takes risk it takes giving up all those things that we are used to. But what's the reward? It's again, that abundant life that is found in Christ. For as, a, as those who struggle with addiction, no longer are addicted to that. For those who didn't know love and what their purpose is, as they find Christ, they, they see that He is love, and that their purpose is to, to, to love Him and to love others. And, and as I've been so encouraged through our church being able to supply for our, our food pantry here at the church and bringing thousands of pounds of food. I'm so thrilled to see that news just in a time where it's easy to just keep focus on ourselves as we're, you know, bunkering into our homes to see you go and to, to buy the canned goods and all these things for other families in our community. Thank you, Camino Chapel, for doing that. Guys, tonight's music is from Bella Emery. She's from Bend, Oregon. She She's performing New Wine, and uh, this song speaks so well to what we're going through. Just this transformation power time from Christ that He can transform us into this new creation for our old selves be be flushed away, you know, just be gone with, and, and Him being refined to be made new, to become this new vessel that carries out the message of love to those around us who need it.
guys, that's our capstone on YouTube this week. I hope you enjoyed it again and just we're praying for you guys. Be checking our capstone Instagram. Uh, we go live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Be checking any updates on our Instagram as well as we, we just learn how to do ministry in these strange times. But we're praying for your families. Thank you for checking this video out. And uh, God bless you all. I actually shook a guy's hand the other day in our neighborhood. And he, I, it was like this slow moment of I could tell it, we just met each other because I'm walking around with Millie. And he puts his hand out there. And I'm like, I can't. The nightly news says no, but you know, so risk. Did you did you I, do it? I risked it. I shook his hand and then I immediately pulled out my baby bum hand sanitizer and just spritzed it and.